So the other day, our house was filled with Fulbrighters from the US to Austria. And it was just such a fun and diverse and passionate and ambitious group of people. And I just realized how much Fulbright is still changing my life to this day, even two years after I went to the US. So, first of all, I want to apologize that it took me this long to make this video. Um, secondly, I will be talking about how to obtain a Fulbright grant. So if you want to become a Fulbright yourself, do stick around. Thirdly, I do want to say that every Fulbright grant is very country specific and it is specific for the field that you want to obtain your Fulbright in. So before you fully note, it, note down what I'm talking about today, do check what you need for your application process for your country and for your field of study. Um, it's different for a researcher than for a graduate student. Um, so do check that. And once you've done that, come back here and hopefully I will still be of help to you. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Natalie. I'm a musician and by now you know that I don't really like t-shirts, even though they might be Fulbrights. <laughs> um, if you don't know what Fulbright exactly does or is, it is an extremely prestigious grant um, that helps people from the US go study abroad or be a teacher abroad. And it also helps students from those uh, countries go study in the US. So in my case, I was lucky enough to win a Belgian award um, to go study in the US two years ago. It literally changed my life. And um, what Fulbright does exactly is it provides a monthly stipend or a fixed amount, kind of depending on the agreement that your country has with the US. It also provides health insurance. It puts you in touch with a network of incredibly gifted, motivated, talented, ambitious people. And um, it's really a fabulous thing to add to your resume. Um, it opens doors and it's just a really life-changing experience and totally worth all the sleepless nights that you might have when you are trying to win this award. So that's where we are about to talk today anyway. So let's just dive right in. So the first thing you need is a killer study essay. And in this essay, you're about to sell your purpose. And it really is selling because these people from the Fulbright Committee, they're about to give you a huge sum of money. So you better make sure that you th show them that you're worthy of that sum of money, right? So you wanna answer three key questions in your study essay. The first one is what exactly do you wanna do in the US? Be as specific as you can about your project, about your research. Um, I don't know how it is for the teaching assistants, but so for me, I tried to be as niche-like as I could. <laughs> Secondly, you want to state very clearly where you want to go and why you want to go there. The more you can strengthen the bond between you and your future school, the better. Um, I know that Fulbright um, asks to uh, apply in five different universities. Um, they do that so that if they grant you the award that they are absolutely sure that you can go, because otherwise the award will be revoked and it's just a pity for someone who did get in and then didn't get the award. So um, I know it might be a bit hard to be as specific about the school, but still just try and incorporate this as much as you can. Again, the stronger the bond between you and your future school or schools, the better. And then thirdly, you want to answer why it's impossible for you to do your project in your home country. Because most likely, um, studying in your home country is a lot cheaper than in the US. Obviously not for every country, but studying in the US tends to be pretty expensive. <laughs> so those are the three questions that you want to give a very clear answer to in your study essay. And then once you have written your first draft, you want to contact three people to read over your study essay. First of all, an expert in your field, just to make sure that the content is A+. <laughs> Secondly, you want someone who is not an expert in your field and preferably also someone who doesn't know you as well or doesn't know you at all. And you want to be able to persuade them to give you a lot of money because <laughs> that's exactly what you're about to do with the Fulbright Committee member that is reading your study essay. 
chances are very high that they are not an expert in your field. So you want to be sure that what you're writing about is still comprehensible to someone who is not very familiar with what you're talking about. And then thirdly, you want to have a good linguist friend who is willing <laughs> to help you with the language aspect of just writing a good essay. Um, I had a very dear friend who was willing to help me out and she really changed the essay so much for the better <laughs> than I could ever have done um, if I hadn't asked her. So three things to answer, three people to contact. Secondly, you need a killer personal statement. Um, so where you're selling your purpose in your study essay, now in your personal statement you're selling yourself. You are showing why you are the perfect candidate to be the ambassador for your country in the US. Um, so you want to talk about who you are, the things you've overcome, awards you've won, you really want to be singing your praises while, you know, being, uh, telling the truth, right? So if you have trouble with singing your praises, like many people do, I also found that very hard. Just ask someone who knows you, who knows what you've done, who knows what you're capable of, to help you write the section. And, um, you know, let them make you feel good about yourself <laughs> if you find it hard to do this and then write from that feeling. Um, secondly, you want to show Fulbright why you are the perfect ambassador because um, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for people who are going to strengthen the cultural exchange between their home country and the US and so your home country is about to invest quite a bit of money so why should they send you? You really want to be answering that question in your personal statement. And then thirdly, you want to think about how you're going to um, return the investment that Fulbright is making uh, into you. What is your impact? What do you want to do during your grant and after your grant? How are you going to keep strengthening um, those relationships? How are you going to keep making an impact after your grant? Those are, I believe, the three most important things to cover in your um, personal statement. And again, it's a very good idea to let people read this. You can contact the same people that have read your study essay. You can also contact different people. And um, it's, again, very wise to contact someone who knows you well, maybe even your field well, and someone who doesn't know you, so that you can really have a very clear picture, like, okay, I am persuasive enough, or, well, this person wasn't fully um, persuaded, so how can I make this better? And then, again, a linguist is a very good idea, because you want to keep people engaged um, in your writing. Is there anything else I need to mention? Probably not, other than if you have these two documents covered with the questions answered, then I think you have a very solid foundation um, for your application. Thirdly, Fulbright is going to check your academic uh, background and your track record. So, if you don't exactly know where to start on your personal statement, it's a good idea to start with your Americanized CV, because this CV is a layout of your academic background, of your awards, of your skills, of references, things you're interested in. It's just a good layout to start um, before you really start writing your personal statement might be something worth thinking about. Secondly, um, you obviously want your academic grades to be as good as possible, but even if you do not have a 4.0 GPA, don't worry, there are plenty of Fulbrighters who didn't have um, the highest distinction and were still awarded um, with the grant. That's just the beauty of Fulbright. They really pick people for how passionate about they are about the project and how um, ambassadorial they can be, you know, so uh, just make sure that you cover those things very well in your essays, in your statement, and um, don't worry too much about academic excellence, although obviously it doesn't hurt if you have a very good academic record. Um, thirdly, you will need three reference letters, so um, you want to make sure that these come from people within your field, but also people who will say different things about you, um, just so that Fulbright has a very 
versatile image of you. <laughs> Is that the word that I'm looking for? I'm not sure, but I hope it makes sense. Um, you want to be as complete as you can. And then lastly, if you have a letter of admission to a US university, it's definitely a good idea to add it. But if you don't have one yet, don't worry at all. It's totally normal if you don't have them yet, because usually the um, application deadline for the US university is December 1st, and they only let you know in like March uh, of the coming year. Whereas the Fulbright deadline is also December 1st or maybe even sooner. So they don't expect you to add um, a letter of admission. However, if you have one, it's a good idea. So in my case, I had one because the first time I um, applied for the Fulbright, I didn't get it, but I did get into the schools. And then I uh, got a deferral from two different schools so I could provide two letters of admission. If you have them, good idea. And if you don't, no worries about it. And then the last part uh, to obtain a Fulbright grant is the interview. This will only happen after you have submitted your whole application and you won't hear from Fulbright for a little while. And usually around January or February, you'll get invited um, to the Fulbright interview, at least in Belgium or Luxembourg. It might still be different for your home country, so um, you can check the timeline on that. Um, in my case, I was not invited the first time I applied to the Fulbright, but I was invited the second time. So if you're invited, it shows that you're still in the running and that's exactly where you want to be. And, you know, preparing an interview, you're going to be in front of a panel of highly uh, important Fulbright people. So this is going to probably be a bit nerve wracking. So you can practice this. Um, try and put yourself into the position of the panelists. Like you are about to give a big amount of money to someone, what do you want to find out about them that's going to persuade you to do so? So you want to, again, be very clear on why your project needs to be in the US and not in your home country. You want to show why you're the perfect ambassador for the cultural exchange part. So really connect to the Fulbright mission. Um, you want to show your resiliency. They can ask you, for example, what are you going to do if you don't get the grant? That's a question that I got. And in my case, I was organizing a fundraising event. You absolutely don't have to do the same thing, but this might have been an answer that helped making make helped make the decision for them. Well, it gets hard talking English at some point. Um, what else? Um, basically, any question that you can think about. If you're about to give a huge sum of money, what do you want to know about the person? Um, so. Let me, I, I wrote a couple of things down, um, but I think I mentioned most of it. Uh, again, obviously, since you wrote the study essay in your personal statement, you know what you're talking about, but still it can be in the moment of truth that your brain just <laughs> dies for a second. And so you want to be very sure that you can fully go 100% when it asks you about your study essay and your personal statement that, you know, you can still bring the coherent story as well and as eloquent as you have presented it in your um, essays. And then um, another important thing, you want to be sure that you dress the part and that you look the part. Um, even if you don't feel super confident, just sit up nice and straight, keep breathing deeply, and uh, if you're like me, you get out of breath really soon. I have it every time I make a vlog, but still, Try and keep breathing and try and be as clear as you can in the way that you're um, expressing yourself. And that's it. <laughs> I know it's easier to say, well, that's all you need to do. Um, but remember, I went through this process twice and in the end, I got it as well. So if I can achieve this, you most certainly can, especially if it's something that you really want to attain, that you really want to experience. Um, go for it don't take no for an answer even if they might fail you the first time doesn't matter just go for it again and believe in your dream um with that said i thank you so much for watching if you found this helpful then do let me know in the comments and let me know if you have any other questions about fulbright i am going to try and persuade some of the fulbrighters that were here in the house um to come and talk about their experience so that it's you know 
it's probably nice for you to see uh, the difference between their application process and then mine, uh, just to see how it's different. So I'm gonna try and make that work for you uh, or make that happen. Um, but if there are different questions, do let them know. And with that said, I wish you a wonderful weekend. If you're going for the Fulbright, good luck, go get them. Um, and let me know if you obtained it at some point. Cheers, and see you next time.